All right. So, um, so now more specifically, we're, we're doing search engines, right? So how do, you how do you decide if your search engine is any good? How do you measure uh, the goodness of the search engine? Well, there's basically two dimensions to this, right? We, and we talked about this on the, first, uh, on the first lecture. So your search engine has to be effective. This means it has to find good results, good relevant results. So it's not enough to just match the words in the documents. You have to figure out which documents are going to go at the top of the ranking, right? So, uh, and then the second component is it must be fast. That's the efficiency part. Uh, how, how long does the user have to wait for the results to get there? How annoyed are they going to be? So those are the basic two dimensions. There are other dimensions that has to do with whether the users like the experience, whether it's easy enough to formulate uh, the query in your system, whether it's easy enough to browse the result. But those two, the effectiveness and efficiency, they basically rule the world. If you can solve them, the other things will come. The, uh, these things are a lot easier to bring along if you, if you win on effectiveness and on uh, <coughs> efficiency. So efficiency, how fast it is, how do you measure that? This is basically relatively simple. So uh, efficiency, uh, you look at various types. So efficiency can be at the indexing time. It, it could also be at retrieval time. So at indexing time, the types of things that you want to measure is how fast can you process the data? So how many milliseconds does it take you to add a document to an index? And more importantly, does that number grow with the size of the index? Because if your indexing system gets slower and slower and slower, the more data you have, then you're going to have a problem. Right? As soon as you try to index something truly big, you know that the time is going to be huge if it takes longer and longer to index with bigger indices. So ideally, you want that number to remain um, a constant. Uh, of course, that's not possible, but you, you try to make it as, as constant-like as you can, as sublinear as you can. Um, um, another, another variable you measure for efficiency is index size. Right? So, uh, and that's basically if your raw data takes 100 gigs, if you've indexed somebody's 100 gig drive and you're building an index, how much space is that index going to take? So it's less of an issue for Google. Oh, well, I guess, no, I shouldn't say that. It is a big, it is a big issue for Google. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a much bigger issue if you're building a desktop search system, right? Because the user doesn't expect you to take up a lot of space for the index. They don't even want to know that there is such a thing uh, as an index. Um, so the size of index as, as proportion of the raw data, that, that is a big constraint. That's why I use things like compression to make the indices take a bit less uh, space on disk. Um, so that's at indexing time. Uh, now at query time, you basically want to measure how long the user has to wait for their results. And there's two ways to, uh, to measure that. So you can measure query throughput. This is a server side measure. This is a measure of how many queries can you process say, per unit of time, say per second. Right. Uh, another way to measure the same uh, the, the same thing is query latency. So this is a user-centric measure, uh, and that's for any given query. You've submitted the query. How long is it going to take you to get the results back? So these seem like very similar. They're actually very different things because today you don't have single core architectures. Pretty much everything that you have is parallelized and pipelined. And in a pipeline system, the throughput and the latency are two completely different things, right? So for example, uh, you know, a, a simple example you could draw, suppose I have a system that takes 10 seconds per query, but can process a million queries in parallel, right? So the throughput of that system would be 100,000 queries per second, because it can do a million of them in a 10 second interval. Right. I could have another system that takes one second to respond to the query, but it maybe maybe the maybe the pipelining isn't as good, so it can only do say a thousand uh, systems, a uh, thousand queries per second. Right. So the throughput for the first system would be a lot higher, but the latency would be a lot better, a lot lower for the second system. So. Um, <clears throat> We played around with MapReduce uh, last week uh, in the lab, uh, so both uh, both both on your machines and AWS. So, is 
say, if you were using MapReduce, does MapReduce have good throughput or good latency? Throughput, yes. So uh, basically, the good, the good thing about MapReduce is it takes a long time to start, but once it starts, you have all of these machines at your disposal. And you can basically farm out the tasks, and, and, they'll do, uh, and they'll do the processing, spit out the results, and you can combine them, right? So you can process lots of things in parallel, but it does have a high startup cost in terms of starting the cluster and actually distributing the task to the cluster. So, uh, so MapReduce has good, very high throughput, but it has very poor latency. So you would want to use MapReduce for tasks that are not sensitive to latency, right? You could use it for indexing, and it's a good match to that, because for indexing, you're basically doing it offline. Users don't depend on it. So, uh, so it's a good fit for that. And MapReduce is a horrible fit for a query system. So in general, what you don't do is you don't use MapReduce to, to match queries to documents because of the, high, uh, of the high latency of the initial startup costs. All of the users would get fed up and leave before the results come back. So uh, two completely different things. Don't, don't, don't mix them up. OK, um, now for effectiveness. This is basically about how accurate uh, the system is. You got, a, you got a search engine, does it find good relevant documents and does it move it to the top of the ranking? So how can you measure that? Uh, the best way to measure that is to set up a study, right? So why is that? That's because think about what your system is trying to achieve. Your search engine, its ultimate customers are the users. So what matters is whether you can get the whether the users can use your search engine effectively, whether they are happy, whether they can solve whatever tasks they're trying to solve with your search engine better than another guy's search engine. So the ultimate way to do this is to set up a study. So you get a group of users, you pin down a specific task, and the task has to be very specific, otherwise uh, you, you're just going to be wasting time. So for example, the task could be uh, you have a set of doctors, you have a set of symptoms, and, and they need to figure out what uh, you know, what is the possible diagnosis given this specific set of symptoms, right? And they have a big database of medical publications that they can query in lots of ways. So that is a specific task, and that has a specific goal. They do the diagnosis at the end, and then you can measure whether they achieved that goal or not. Did they correctly diagnose the thing? So, um, and that's a specific information need, so some, something very specific that they're looking for. Uh, again, you must have a baseline system because if you're just doing it in a vacuum, at the end of the study, you are going to get a number, right? Say 64% of them, of the users of your system gave a correct diagnosis within, say, five minutes, right? Is that good or not? And you don't know unless you have a baseline, unless you have something to compare this to, right? So you give them your system, and then you have them use Google on the side, and then you see which one is more effective. So that would be the way to do this. <clears throat> Uh, and then as they're doing it, you observe the users and try to get feedback from them, right? So the users who are using your system, did they complete the task faster? Did they, did they get a successful result more often? Uh, is, there, is there a difference in the results, right? Did, did the users of your system achieve greater coverage of whatever they were trying to find? Uh, did they find different aspects? Uh, um, and you can also ask subjective things, like which interface did they like? But that... I mean, the users always tend to like fancier interfaces, even if they are slower and, and less useful. So, so in general, the subjective questions that you ask are kind of useless. And what is useful is getting them to complete a task and then watching the groups. So you have a group using system A, group using system B, and then just measuring which one of them is more effective, which one of them get the results faster, which one of them uh, diagnosed more correctly, something like that. <coughs> okay. So, uh, so that is the ultimate way to, uh, to evaluate how good your search engine is. Uh, of course, there are lots of downsides to this, right? This is expensive to set up. You need to get a bunch of people into the same room, talk to them about how to run the system, measure everything. So it takes loads and loads of time. If you make a tweak to the algorithm and you want to rerun the study, that's a very expensive proposition, right? So. Uh, Another problem with studies is they're very difficult to reproduce, right? So uh, you may have built your algorithm and you, run the, and you run the study and you show that your algorithm is, say, better than Google. Next day, I build my algorithm and I want to prove that my algorithm is better than your algorithm. How the heck do I do that? 
I could try to get your system, right? Suppose you're friendly and you actually give me your system. I have my system, I have your system. I'm going to be running my own study, but I'm going to be using different users and the task is going to be slightly different because I can't control for everything perfectly. So in the end, the study that I run is a little bit different from the study that you ran. And now I start claiming that my system is better than yours and you come and say, well, okay, you, the following points in your study are flawed. Right? And we start bickering about whether your study was better or worse than my study. So, uh, so it is difficult to uh, reproduce results, and there isn't sort of a, a, a gold standard that everyone can measure against. <clears throat> so there are some downsides, but ultimately this is the best way. Right. So. We